This march in D major is part of Bach's notebook for Anna Magdalena, a collection of keyboard music Bach presented to his second wife, Anna Magdalena Bach. The notebooks give us an idea of domestic music that the Bach family enjoyed. There are two notebooks, the first written in 1722 and the second one in 1725. The first notebook contains only works by J.S. Bach. The second notebook features other composers. This march is often attributed to C.P.E. Bach, one of J.S. Bach's sons. March is cheerful, and I tried to imagine how one might play it on a keyboard, since this is the instrument for which it was originally written. The left hand bass notes would have been played staccato, and though in this excerpt not all the eighth notes have staccatos indicated, I've tried to keep things short with clear articulations and a drier approach, rather than keeping things super smooth or connected between notes. I also imagine what it might be like to march to this music, where our legs would alternate lifting and lowering. Each of the staccato quarter notes are like marching feet. There are three variations of the staccato idea here. One, the literal staccatos above the quarter notes, like in the very beginning, where the starts and ends of notes are stopped, creating a clear, short note. Number two, places like the running eighth notes, which don't have staccatos, but need to have a detached feel and sound. I listen for there to be a slight click to my bow changes to create a bit of clarity. And finally, number three, there are the hooked bowings we see in the second line, where there is a staccato under a slur. This is the same idea as the beginning, but it is worth pointing out because the hooked bowings create a slightly different feel for creating the needed stops in a bow. In your various different staccatos, reduce your bow speed and create a little bit of pressure into the strings to either get the bite, stop, or click you need. Much like Scheherazade, there is only one printed dynamic in this excerpt. And again, like Scheherazade, we want to take it upon ourselves to insert different volumes, shapes, colors, and shades of forte. My favorite place to do this is in the running series of eighth notes in the second half of this excerpt, where we go up and down the fingerboard with our ascending and descending scalar passages. We have a series of mini hills to climb each sequence before we drop down again. Let's create mini crescendos each time we have these rising figures, while each of these figurations also build to a larger, longer crescendo, so that we feel like we are driving the music to a triumphant finish, where we end on a high D. A quick note about the shifting work here. We talked about crossover shifts in the previous excerpt, the Hatikva. I wanted to quickly point out that the majority of shifts here are not crossover shifts. We still have one, for example, in measure 16 through 17, where we descend from first to second finger. 
However, in addition, we also have same finger shifts where you are going from a second finger to a second finger, for example, like in measure 15, or what I would call just regular shifts, like in the second half of measure 14, where we go from a fourth finger to a first finger descending. Make sure you practice these shifts in the same way, making sure the hand is not distorted and that it is relaxed and as slow and controlled as possible. Many people find that same finger shifts and regular shifts reduces the risk of twisting the hand out of alignment, but they are still tricky and therefore worth devoting some special attention.